Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make an ice dyed geode shirt. I've prepped the shirt like normal and I have it turned inside out. I'm going to begin by choosing an area on the shirt where I'd like to start a geode. I'm going to start one up in the shoulder portion of the shirt, so I'm going to pinch where I'd like for the center of the geode to be. Then I'm going to lift the shirt up off the table, kind of give it a little bit of a shake, let it fall naturally. And then I'm going to start tying the geode rings from the bottom of the geode, or the outer rings of the geode. I think whenever I tie from the outer rings going in toward the center of the geode, my rings end up looking more natural. They don't look like a bullseye. I think they're more unusually shaped. I'm also going to keep my fabric messy as I go ahead and tie these rings. I'm going to rough the fabric up a little bit. And then as I get closer into the center of the geode, I'm going to push the fabric down inside. That's going to make the center of the geode look pretty interesting. It's going to cause little pockets in the fabric and just trust me, it'll look cool. You can also take and split your geodes. That's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to take the sinew down through the fabric and then make a couple of different centers out of that fabric. By the way, I'm using sinew to tie these geodes because I'd like to have some definition lines in my geodes. So whenever I take the sinew, which is wax coated, wrap it around the fabric and then I tighten it down until it locks down on itself, that's not going to allow the dye to get underneath that area. So I'm going to have a definition line, which will make the geode look cool. I'm going to continue this geode tying process on the shirt. And I'm going to vary like the size of the geodes and the distance between the lines in the geodes. I want to keep this shirt as random as possible. Geodes are one of those designs that the messier and the more wrinkled the shirt is when you tie it, the better the geodes look. Okay, well I've got most of the geodes on the shirt, and once I've tied the last one, I'm going to place some sinew lines in between all the geodes. I don't have a whole lot of fabric in between, but I'd like to put a few definition lines in that area. Then I'm going to place the shirt aside, and I'm going to allow it to dry out completely. Because these folds are really thick, I get better color saturation in the center of the geodes if I apply the dye when they're completely dry. 
I have a blog post out on my website which discusses this topic in a little bit more detail. If you'd like a link to my website, it's down below this video in the description. I would like for this geode to have a little bit of a softer feel to it. So I'm going to apply the dye over the top of the ice. So to do that, I've taken a plastic tub or tote and I'm using a metal colander. I'm going to place that over the tote and then place the shirt down inside. The metal colander is up off of the bottom of the plastic tub or tote, so it is not going to sit down inside of the muck while the shirt is processing. By the way, all muck is, is the runoff from the melting ice that's mixed with the dye. Because I want this shirt to have kind of a lighter and softer feel, I'm not going to allow the shirt to process down in the muck. I started by adding some ice over the top of the shirt. Then I'm going to apply the dye in stripes over the top of the ice. And I know I've chosen a lot of colors, but I found this really cool stone that was out on Pinterest. I never could find the name of the stone, but I did find one that was similar and it's called a Mexican fire agate. I don't have rights to the photo, so I can't really show you the photo that I'm referencing, but I think that's a great way to find more realistic colors is to choose a stone out online and kind of choose your dye colors to match that stone. If you happen to be a collector and you have your own stone collection, well, then that's even better. So this stone was really cool in that it was darker, kind of orangey red colors with one little pop of a turquoisey type color. So I'm using jade green and it makes me a little bit nervous with the rest of the colors for this shirt, but I'm gonna trust that it's gonna end up looking cool. So for this shirt, I'm gonna use jade green from Dharma, spicy plum from Pro Chemical and Dye, razzle dazzle from Dharma, berry from Pro Chemical and Dye, black cherry from Dharma, firecracker from Dharma, and firecracker I believe is a special order color. The special order colors from Dharma are ones that they will sell in large quantities, but they don't keep them in regular stock to purchase in smaller quantities. However, if you'd like to still purchase these dyes, you can usually find them at a Facebook group called Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace. And I've left a link down below in the description for this video to that Facebook page. People purchase the dyes in smaller quantities and then they break them up and sell them so that you don't have to buy such a large amount. Then I'm using Pagoda Red from Dharma, Oxblood Red from Dharma, Citrus Got Real from Dharma, and that color is a muck dye color. That is a color that you can no longer get from Dharma, but you can just choose another orange that works. Then Bracken, which is also a special order color from Dharma, and lastly, I'm using Harvest Wheat from Pro Chemical and Dye. If you don't have any of these colors, just find some colors that you like that you can substitute. They don't have to be exact. That's kind of the fun thing about tie dyeing is you can make it your own. Then once I have all the dye over the top of the ice, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of additional dry soda ash over the top. That way I make sure that when the ice melts and runs through the shirt, it doesn't rinse out all the soda ash that I had in the shirt from the initial soda ash soak. You need to have some soda ash in your shirt to raise the pH so that the dye will properly bond with the fabric. Now I'm gonna let the ice melt and see where we're at with the shirt. After this layer of ice melted, I noticed I still had a couple of areas that look to still be white. So there's a couple of ways that I can deal with that. I can either just leave it alone, add a little bit more ice on top and hope that it flushes some of that dye down through the shirt, or I can add a little bit more dye to that area. Because I applied the dye over the top of the ice, I'm not entirely sure which color was exactly in that area, but because it's a geode, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I can add any color down through there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda do a combination of both of those. For one of the spots, I'm gonna apply a little bit of dye underneath 
the ice just right on that white area because that area is pretty thick and I wanted to make sure I got a little bit of dye in there at least. Then for the other space that I thought was kind of white, I'm going to apply the dye over the top of the ice. Then I'm going to go ahead and add some more ice to the rest of the shirt because I do still have some dye left sitting on top. That'll help force some of that dye that's left sitting on top down through the shirt. After the second layer of ice melted, I left the shirt about 48 hours before I started rinsing it. So I took the shirt to my utility sink and I started rinsing it in cold water. And as you can see, the dye's gone through pretty well to the back side. I'm rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Once I've rinsed really well in cold water, I'm going to warm the water up to hot and continue rinsing in hot water to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. I'm going to untie the shirt and then instead of just continuing to rinse for a really long time, I'm going to run some really hot water in my utility sink, add a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water and allow the shirt to soak. When the water cools off, I'm going to change it out and I'm going to continue that hot water soak with this shirt until my water is remaining almost clear. Then I'll put it into my washing machine along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent and wash it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so I've washed and dried the shirt and I've ironed it and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one looks really cool. I definitely think it looks like a geode. I don't think it looks exactly like the geode that I was referencing in the fact that my colors aren't quite as dark as that one was, but I still think it looks like a natural stone and I think it looks really cool. I think all the colors worked very well together and as nervous as I was about adding the jade green, I think it really works with this shirt. I like that pop of that brighter green in amidst all the darker colors. And I also think all the geodes look really cool. I did kind of make my geodes a little bit larger, so I don't have as many of them on this shirt, but I like that look too. I know there are some tie dyers who like the look of a whole bunch of little bitty tiny geodes on a shirt, but for this shirt, I wanted some larger, chunkier geodes, and I think I accomplished that. My lines kind of in toward the middle of the shirt are a little more muddied. They're just not quite as defined. But I don't think that looks bad. I don't think every single line on your geode has to be perfect. That's why I think it looks more realistic. If you look at an actual geode stone, some of the lines are thicker, some of them are thinner, and that's what this shirt has. If you notice, some of my white lines are pretty thick and some of them are just barely there. I think that just adds more to the natural look. If you look at the geode on the back, it almost looks like a chicken or something like that. I've zoomed in so that you can see it. It's got like a pop of a bright yellow color, which I found kind of interesting, but the shape of it, it looks like an eye with one of the holes that were formed in the geode. I just think it looks really cool. I thought that was something funny that showed up in that geode. So overall, I love this shirt. I love the softer, more flowy feel. I love the shape of the geodes. I love the colors. I love all the color splits. Um, I think it looks really realistic and natural. But what do you guys think? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed watching the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.